it's time. It is finally time for WrestleMania weekend, which means we got a lot of wrestling. We got a lot of sports entertainment and we got a lot of WWWWE happening right about now taking place in the Empire City, New York and New Jersey. Of course, it's going to be Jersey. Everything's legal in New Jersey. <laughs> mm. Nice one. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I like that one. I, I feel very good and about that And we're shutting one. it down. Yeah, okay, fine, whatever. Anyway, I am your host on this final Smash pay-per-view prediction special for this prediction season because, you know, we got to get it started all over again next month because there is no off-season for the WWE. None whatsoever. No, it's not. I am your host, Spotty Menace, aka D Man. Your man, I'm sitting here with my sister, my day one, the one who holds it down for me, my co host, Daria. Say what's up, Daria. What's up, Daria? And we have our king dead hero, KD, coming in <laughs> here and saving us from ourselves. What's really good, KD? Oh, uh, just, uh, Getting prepped for WrestleMania, doing my training hard, taking my vitamins, <laughs> saying my prayers. Make sure to drink your milk. Don't yeah, gotta milk. drink some milk. We gotta drink our milk, yeah. yeah. Gotta need those strong bones for this long weekend. <laughs> gotta get yeah. that vitamin R. Wait, no, that's milk. <laughs> my bad. Oh. My bad. My bad. My bad. Anyway, uh, if this is your first time uh, listening to us, on this Smash Review Prediction special. First of all, I'm going to ask you what's going on. And second of all, this is how we handle things. We go through a, a brief breakdown of what our, our storylines are looking like, what's happening, what's leading up to these particular matches and all that. And then we give our predictions, what our, what our thoughts are. Yeah, you name it. We got it. it. We handle yeah. that. Yeah, we do. And if and if you happen to hear some 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 idle stuff in the background, we got family here. Yay, <laughs> yay, yay! So it's whatever. We're here. We love our we love our people. We love our kaiju people. Anyway, we're gonna start off with NXT Takeover happening as of this recording tomorrow. But by the time it pops up tonight, we're gonna start us off because we have a packed packed. NXT TakeOver event happening with us. Every championship is on the line. We're going to start off with our tag teams, first and foremost. We've got the Roar Raiders. Wait, did I, say, did I say Roar Raiders? You did say, <laughs> you well, did say even... Roar Raiders. Yeah, because wow. what is Roar Raiders? Like wow. Roar the Lion or something? Oh, okay. I, 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 I got Raiders. tongue twisted. Leave a brother alone. Tongue I'm twisted. Saying, it we're happens. Professional, it happens dude. to the best of us. No, we're professionals. War Raiders. And they're going up against Alistair Black and Ricochet. Yes. Awesome stuff happening here. Uh, there really hasn't been a lot of face-to-face -face time between these two, aside from just, you know, them beating up other people and then staring each other down, possibly. Uh, Alistair Black and Ricochet, a, a team that just kind of got thrown together, but for some reason, it works. They have chemistry, and it is... An amazing thing to see to watch these two go at everybody else in the tag team divisions, both on the main roster and on NXT. They win the Dusty Rhodes Classic, which gives them a chance to face up against War Raiders Hanson and Row at NXT TakeOver. Um, so, you know, here's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, we got a long, long, long list to go through. Yeah, uh... So matches, matches, matches might get added. Matches might get subtracted or condensed. But as it stands right now, sub car subject to change. We have twenty one freaking matches total, including NXT, or including just... NXT. Oh, Lord. so this is going to be a long weekend. So we don't want to be here for too long. So we're just going to run through this as much as quickly as we possibly can. Okay. So, Daria, we're going to start you off. War Raiders versus Ricochet and Alistair no, Black. Who you got? No, time out. No, you're not doing it this time. No. What am, I, what am I not doing? KD. Yes. War Raiders or Alistair Black and Ricochet? Oh, jeez. It's geez. uniformity. Whatever. I'm sorry, KD. Go ahead. 
This is a tough one, actually. I mean, War Raiders have been a team freaking forever through thick and thin, better and worse, everything else. They're the team's team. They, like, you know, know their business. Alistair Black and Ricochet just happened to, like, you know, it's like, hey, we actually work together pretty well. They haven't had that cohesion that, like, you know, that second sight that develops between two proper uh, tag team uh, partners the way uh, the War Raiders have. So I'm going to actually say the War Raiders take it. All right, we'll take that. We'll take that. Now, Daria? Can can I say now? Okay, I'm going to kind of backtrack on what KD just said. Backtrack. Um, but I understand what he means, the cohesion between Aleister Black and Ricochet. They're, they just were meshed as a team. Like for the past, like two months maybe? Yeah. Because, and I'm only saying that, uh, because watching Raw and SmackDown, they seem to be looking kind of hot and a force to be reckoned with. Okay. So, with that being said... I'm about to say, like, you left, you left a pause. There, I did, because like, like, I, I had something else to say, but it flew my mind. Your mind. Okay, go ahead. So, I, 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 I'm going to go with Alistair and Ricochet. Alistair and Which might be Ricochet. stupid, because they might be called up on the main roster. I mean, they're already whatever. on the main roster, so it, it, it doesn't matter. So, what they, they, they could always They could always just drop right back down, the same way with Gargano. Gargano got, got called up with uh, Tommaso Ciampa, but then he gets injured, mm-hmm. and Gargano was right back in the uh, NXT title hunt, so... Well, then, for my aunt, I'm going to say Alistair Black and Ricochet, because she is so in love with Ricochet. All right. Um... Alistair Black and Ricochet, I think, have something much more, uh, much bigger on the horizon for both of them separately. Uh, this is a great thing. This is something that they can call back to for the rest of their careers, however long it lasts in the WWE. But that being said, I think War Raiders maintain uh, this 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 little win. They uh, the NXT Tag Division is still incredibly, surprisingly, freaking strong. Uh, and I'm hoping that Street Profits get the next shot at the title. But right now, I think it's going to be War Raiders that pick up the win. Um, yeah, see, we're going to try to run through this. Uh, Pete Dunn versus Walter for the WWE NXT UK Championship. Wait, is the NXT before the, you know what? Don't matter. No, it's the WWE UK Championship. It's yeah, not yeah. There's, there's no NXT in front of yeah. it. That's what I thought. Okay, right. so WWE UK Championship. We have Pete Dunn versus Walter. KD, help us out on this one. <laughs> well, first of all, put some respect in the name. It's Walter. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I forgot. It's in all letters. caps. It's, it's all caps. Walter. Caps. You give the man the respect he's earned. <laughs> Wikipedia Walter. sure as hell ain't. Walter, uh, yeah, Wikipedia needs to learn their lesson. Walter needs to go over <laughs> there and chop them <laughs> in the chest. Do. <laughs> but what do you know about Walter? Yeah, yeah, I mean, Walter. Walter. Walter will cave in a motherfuck's chest. That's what I know about Walter. Oh, God. So many matches. Everybody's scar. Like, there's scar tissue. How was your chest scar tissue, baby? I still remember my introduction to him last year when he fought PCO, and PCO's chest looked like it had just been through a blender after he was done with it. Oh, yes. It looked like meat. Yeah. Like, hanging meat on their chest. Mm. Scared the crap out of me. I mean, that said, Pete Dunn is on going to be on day 685 of his legendary title reign. I don't think anybody's going to break that number. No one's going to even come no. close to that number. So no. the fact is, he's been smart enough to hold on to that belt for 685 days. What's to say there won't be a 686 day? I'm going to say Dunn holds on to it somehow. Okay. All right. I have to agree. Although I, 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 I think Walter will be phenomenal with this title around him. Oh, man. But God, Pete Dunn, come on now. That's just not fair. Uh, I love me some Walter. I, I, I didn't... I, uh, I got... uh, 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 Walter! Walter! My bad! Mm, so <gasps> let me get my voice right. I love me some Walter! There you go. <laughs> got my introduction to him in, in the first match. I, I, I was watching, like, YouTube videos and clips of some of his matches, but like those didn't do it any service compared to watching it in in the WWE UK NXT NXT UK ring and seeing him just slap a bitch around with chop after chop after chop after chop and he scared me. I, I'm not a man who scares easily. <laughs> and he scared the crap out of me. Like Jesus Christ. That being said, I see Pete Dunn just just knows how to manipulate a body. 
He may be small, but he's crafty. He's technically sound. He's amazing in the freaking ring. And like, I, I want to see Pete Dunn versus everybody. I want to see Pete Dunn versus the world. So you know what? Pete Dunn gets the win, in my opinion. Next up, we have, we're, we're, you know, we're going to, uh, this, this thing is weird for some reason. Let, let's, let's jump, let's jump to the NXT North American Championship match. Regular singles match. Okay. We've got Matt Riddle, the bro. No, no. Bro. 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 Like what was different than you the were? Way? You were lagging out the, uh. Yeah, it's bro. But I was, I was, you know, versus the Velveteen Dream. Versus Velveteen, you see, this is what I got to deal with between both of these two. I will not have it on this last one for the season. Season two starting next month. This is the end of season one. Mm. We're going to do this. Velveteen Dream, the champion versus Matt Riddle. Velveteen Dream says Matt Riddle's name. He bestows upon him the gift of saying his name. First of all, I love that callback that they did this past uh, uh, a couple of NXTs ago where he said, I gave you the gift of saying my name because he got his start by getting Aleister Black to say his name whether he, he sure won or did. lost. And so, this was his first, it wasn't that his first uh, pay-per-view. That was his first takeover, yes. Yeah. And he showed his ass yes, he did. on that one. I'm expecting more of the same against Matt Riddle, someone who was very solid, but I don't know if Velveteen Dream can handle his MMA expertise. Uh, everybody else has either been a high flyer or, you know, just a technical guy, but he's been able to, to withstand a lot of their offenses. But when he goes up against a guy with the, the ability to kick and, you know, limb manipulate, it's a little bit of a, an issue. So KD, let's, let's jump right into this. Who you got? Velveteen Dream, the champion versus the bro. Velveteen Dream just recently won that title and I can't see him giving it up. Also, I just remember a couple NXT TVs ago when he decides to interrupt a Matt Riddle match by coming out in the most spectacular couch and just holding this chalice and just watching this match. And it's like, there's no way Dream's going to be losing that soon. You know what? Yeah, I, I agree. That. I can feel that. So you got I'm gonna the Dream. I'm going to have to stick with the Dream. You got I love dream. my bro, but I got to stick with the dream. <laughs> All right. We got two, two for the dream. I, Matt, this is going to be a hard one. This is, it, this is definitely going to be a hard one. I think all of these matches are hard. Yeah. Because like with, with this particular one, like, like you don't want to diminish Matt Riddle's light this no. early. I, I don't think, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I don't think uh, this match is going to tarnish or diminish anything about Matt Riddle. No, I, but what, what I'm saying is like, you, you have him on this this tear. He has not lost. Then again, he's only really been up against Cassius Ono and a few jobbers. Right. So this is like his real first true test. Right. So how do you handle Matt Riddle? Do you continue to shoot him up to the stars or do you risk like some sort of a speed bump in, in Velveteen Dream? And the same for Velveteen Dream. Yeah. He just gets the championship. Yeah. So what are you going to do with him? Is he is he just going to be a transitional champion? Right. Uh, between, this is a tough uh, one. I mean, because yeah. Matt Riddle has insisted his destination is Brock Lesnar. And yeah. yeah. So like, like are we are who's getting jumped up to the main roster is really the it was really the that question is, that you're really asking uh, that you're asking in this one. And that's a really good question. The other thing I want to say with Velveteen Dream is he I don't know it's just it's so much behind him having this title. Oh yeah, like it looks sexy. Oh, it looks, it looks amazing wanted. around his waist. He like he is. What do you call it? Unsufferable, insufferable. Like he, I just like annoy. He annoys me. But you love him. Yes. Okay. So you know what? I'm just gonna cut it right there. We're just gonna go Velveteen Dream three for three. This is this is this is handle that. Yeah. <gasps> Next we have two out of three falls for the NXT Championship. We have Johnny Gargano, who I guess you could say was just penciled in for this particular match, yeah. whereas Adam Cole had to face off against four other competitors just for the chance yeah. to come up in this match for the NXT Championship, uh, yeah. vacated by Tommaso Ciampa after his neck injury and surgery. Yeah, we hope you get well because... Oh, yeah, you know, Ciampa, you need to come back, dude, for real. Work like, that out, is, whatever that's, you do. That's just, that's just tough to hear and to see happen to you know a, a great competitor like you. But we have Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole. Oh, my God, that promo package that they had at the last NXT. If you haven't seen it, 
go ahead and watch it. It gets you so freaking hype. The mute, ooh, excuse me, the music gets you so freaking hype. It's perfect. It's just ah. What's but, the song, D? What's the song? I, I can't remember the name of it. You but you, the, see the, me with the crown. Okay. You know, oh yeah, B- Billie yeah. Eilish. Yeah. Yes. She's yeah, the official. Uh, she has the official theme song for NXT Takeover. New York. How is yes. that? How is that so much more hype than whatever the hell they got for for WrestleMania? We're, that's that's for another day. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're getting anyway, two out of three falls. Gargano versus Cole. KD, who you got? This is the tough one. The two out of three falls match is usually the big one in uh, NXT. That's their signature match forever now. Um, oh, yeah, true. <laughs> Johnny Gargano has been a dream denied for a long time. It feels weird that this could possibly be his shot after, like, you know, over a year now of being antagonized and reuniting with uh, with Tomasa Ciampa and everything else that happened. But Adam Cole has sworn up and down the Undisputed Era. This is their year. They're taking all the gold back. So, I mean, they're both ready, willing, and able to go to distance. It's just a question of who's going to get that second fall. And I yeah. think in this case, it's going to be Adam Cole, baby. All right. He's got the baby going. Yeah, I am going to have to agree because for some reason, I have in the back of my head, Gargano is going on the main roster (laughs) very, very soon. (laughs) I might be wrong and it might sound stupid, but that's just something seems kooky about this. Kooky about this. So you got Adam Cole. Yeah. He's got Adam Cole. Again, a lot of these questions are... Not just so much who's going to win the match. It's what are they doing next with them. And I don't see Johnny Gargano staying on NXT for far too long because he looked amazing on the main roster. He That just looks like that's his home. Mm-hmm. And and the, uh, uh, the, the main roster style seems perfectly fit for Johnny Gargano at this particular point in time. Um I don't know. I, I kind of see... This, this dream deferred being a thing that they move forward with on the main roster after TakeOver. And Johnny Gargano, it just either freaking flips out or he gets the crowd right behind him as he searches for other gold outside of NXT. So you know what? I got Adam Cole. I got Adam Cole. I think he's going to get it. I think of the Undisputed Era is going to be like, they're going to come through dripping. Probably come through dripping for the rest Probably. for the rest of the freaking year, just like dripped in gold. So you know what? I got Adam Cole on that one. All Next, right. we got our final match, which is the women's on match. NXT, so I'm gonna let you handle that, D. Go it ahead. It is the women's match. We have uh, Shayna Baszler, Io Shirai, Bianca Belair, and Kyrie Sane. Now, I'm not sure if it's much of a storyline with this. It's it's really just been Shayna Baszler wants to beat everybody up. Yeah, basically, that's, that's, li- so oh, that's basically what's been going on. Shayna Baszler has basically been wreaking havoc in the women's locker room, dominating her presence and the championship. That's what's going on right now. We, we also have a little mini storyline between Bianca Belair, Il Shirai, and Kyrie Sane. I'm getting to that. So Bianca Belair, she got issues. With Io Shirai. With everybody. And Kyrie Shane. Shane? Yeah, Shane. But with that being said, she still wants that title. I think that last title match that she had with Shayna Baszler, I kind of feel like she felt like that was taken from her. Is that fair to say? Oh, yeah, because uh, uh, Jessamyn Duke and What's-Her-Face came in and distracted her. Okay, yeah, I get that. if you want me to be honest, Bianca is on a revenge right now. Yeah, she wants wants everybody in this match. Bianca wants to beat the hell out. Yeah, there you go. So we got got that. So uh, So we'll we'll throw it to KD. Okay, KD, what do you think? This is a tough one. Shayna Baszler has been on a tear of the women's division for, what has it been now, a year? Just about. Just about a year. Yeah. And it's like she's been through the entire roster, terrorized all of them, defeated everybody at one point or another. And then we come to now. <laughs> uh, 
Kyrie Sane, her <laughs> one major loss, like the one who got away, she got her win back from her. Yeah, she did. Bianca Belair, I mean, she's the upstart. She didn't come through the last time she had this opportunity, but this time, who's to say? Yeah, she ain't got to pin Baszler for this. Uh, yeah, you don't have to pin Baszler to win. That's the important part about this match. And then you have Io Shirai, the genius of the skies. And it's... Mm. It's got to be Io. That, 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 I really think it's her. She looks magnificent when she held up that belt at the end of this week's NXT TV. Mm-hmm. And that basically sealed it for me. It's like she's the one. She's the one who's going to take this. Okay. I, I, I'm going to have to be honest. I, I, I think Io Shirai too. I want it to be Bianca. Um, I just, I'm not sure what's going on there that that is having me not say Bianca. But uh, I'm going to have to agree with Io Shirai because uh, here's another inter- interesting thought that I'm thinking of. Io Shirai and Kairi Sane, how is that going to go? Mm. It's a fatal four-way. These are best friends. They, they, I think they did touch up on it just a little bit uh, um, where, where like they both said that they would be happy for each other to have the title. Yeah. Um, but, cause... but who pins who? Oh, that's actually a good question. If it comes down to that, who pins who? Um. Mm. I don't yeah, know who eats toughie. the pen in this one. Yeah. I don't know who eats the pen. It's a toughie. Yeah, I, I'm gonna but, go with you. Got Io Shirai. Yeah. You got Io Shirai. You got Spot Io Shirai. You, you know got? what? Here, here, here's what I'm gonna go yeah, for. I'm, got? I'm gonna go with Bianca Belair. Okay. Fair. I, I, I give I give it to Bianca Belair. I think. Uh, what ends up happening is I think Jasmine Duke and What's Her Face. I'm gonna keep calling her What's Her Face because I'm not gonna bother looking it up right now. I think they're going to get involved in the match because it's within their right. It's no disqualification. It's a fatal four-way. I was going to say it's a fatal four, so it wouldn't happens. matter. I think chaos is going to reign. I think you know people are going to get knocked out uh, <laughs> about here and there. And I think uh, Bianca Belair is going to end up sneaking a pin on Kyrie Sane. I think a, I think Kyrie like Sane of... eats the pin. It doesn't ruin her mystique. She's no, still perfectly doesn't. fine. Yeah. I think Bianca Belair sneaks a pin. I, I don't think it's going to be dominant by any stretch of the imagination, mainly because it's four women all with their own sense of dominance uh, uh, in the ring, and they're just going to beat each other to shit. Yeah, they are. I yeah. think that's what's going to happen. And I think that's I think uh, that's fair to say. With that being said, <laughs> that is the NXT. Final match of the best part of this weekend in terms of WWE content. And then we get to the long, lengthy-ass freaking slog that is WrestleMania. It's going to be filled with pageantry. And it's also going to be filled with head-scratching booking decisions because that is the WWE. So we're going to start with the least important matches out of this. That is the... uh, Women's Battle Royale and the Arm Bar Battle Royale. Since there is no story to this, here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm I'm going to ask you, men, man, woman, who you got? And just move on. Hold up. Wait. What now? It's uh it's we're, we're doing the Battle Royales, but we're doing them together. We're just going to do them together. Okay. So well, I'm going to ask I'm going to ask man, woman, who you got? You used to give me a man, you give me a woman who's going to be in the match and just move on. There's no story. Okay, well let KD go. All right, so KD Man, woman, who you got? Okay, man, Braun Strowman, woman, Asuka. And there you go. All right. Daria? Uh, Xavier, Asuka. Okay. Uh, Braun Strowman, Naomi. Nice. Hmm. Nice. She she she's got to she's got to get her she got to get her title back. Now we're going to move on to the more important match that happens to be on the pre-show because Whatever fuck the, the cruiserweights, apparently. Yeah, uh, apparently. Because fuck the cruiserweights. It's a thing. I love them, but apparently they don't. Uh, so we got Buddy Murphy versus Tony Nese. There is so much going on to this. I love everything that they're they're doing with this. They're making Tony Nese seem like he's in very important. Uh, the last image that you see of him is beating the shit out of Buddy Murphy and on they, 205 Live. Yes, and it works. And they did this within two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, like this, 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 all of this transpired. Like, I mean, I would posit that they've done it before this, uh-huh. uh, because the fact that Tony Nice, whenever Tony Nice is ever in a uh, has a chance to to go after the title, they do talk up the fact that oh, they're best friends, but he never seems to get that close. It's never seen as that close because you have Cedric Alexander. Cedric Alexander 
is playing the role of almost gatekeeper yeah. whenever to, uh, whenever anybody wants to go for the title because like you want you want to get to Buddy Murphy you have to go through uh, a Cedric Alexander yeah you have to yeah and it's perfect that the final match that we got in the tournament for the number one contendership was Buddy Murphy versus Cedric Alexander because even Buddy Murphy throughout all of this he's my best friend he was ready to face Cedric Alexander. Like, like he's going to yeah. win again. Now, whether that's just straight up disrespect to Tony Nese or whether that's, you know, much mad respect to Cedric Alexander, it's hard to tell because they never really played up either end of it. And Buddy but, Murphy is just an asshole. But yeah, me, Buddy so. Murphy is just kind of an asshole. So, you know, it could I, be both. I, I do have to give uh, points as to whoever's doing the storytelling for this. Because this could have gone sloppy or been a shit show, like, quickly. Yeah, it could have been. And the fact that they did it within two weeks, we have a storyline, we have a backstory, we have the information that we need for this match. Yeah. So, let's let's stop standing on ceremony. KD, who you got? Buddy Murphy versus Tony Nese. Oh, boy. I mean, they're both excellent competitors. Tony Nese has upped his game lately from becoming, like, basically the cruiserweights a version of a jobber to reminding folks why he was in the original cruiserweight tournament to begin with. Uh, Buddy Murphy has been, like, just basically on a legendary run with his cruiserweight title. I mean, it is his title. Let's just yeah. put that plainly. And it will continue to be his title. Buddy Murphy is winning this match. <laughs> okay. Okay, Daria, who you got? Yeah, I still got beef with Buddy Murphy. Because <laughs> he sprayed... He, j- he jizzed me. He hair raked me with his hair juice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still yeah, not happy about that. Yeah, we were that. at an NXT live show, and he swung his hair. Like, before before he went to 205 Live, like he swung his hair at the crowd and, like, splattered just, her. <laughs> yeah, just hair juice everywhere on me. Not even, not even D. Just yeah, me. Yeah, it didn't hit me at all. That's what. Oh hilarious. my god, that's yeah, hilarious. Yeah, and, and and it smelled like lavender. Apparently, it did smell like lavender. It smelled so good. I I was hair raped, but I I I would go with Buddy Murphy. Okay, you got Buddy Murphy. So the same way that Pete Dunn has just like been on a tear with the title, Buddy Murphy has been on that same kind of tear. He he has been the standout, like in 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 a class full of incredibly talented. Uh, a charismatic, just entertaining talent in 205 Live. Buddy Murphy has been standing out, uh, standing apart from everybody else. Uh, he has been the MVP for the past year and a half, right about now. Um, that being said, I think, like, I think this story is perfect for Tony Needs to get the title. I, I think it is. If not this one, then you know a later match. Um, so you know what? No, I'll, I'll say that I think I think this doesn't come to an end at WrestleMania. I think we're going to see them at the at the next uh, pay per view uh, or one a little bit further down the line. Tony Nese versus Brady Murphy, and they're going to get our sympathies up because I don't think I don't think it's there yet with Tony Nese. I think we I think like the fans want him to win, but I yeah. think they want him to win more because Buddy Murphy's a dick, not because they give a shit about Tony Nese. And I, I, I don't think that, that you will have the same emotional weight of Tony Nese raising the title above his head that you would get, say, at SummerSlam after, like, Buddy Murphy either ducks or beat the cra- beats the crap out of Tony Nese so repeatedly that everybody is sympathetic for him. So, you know what? Three for three, Buddy Murphy. Okay, I think he gets cool. the win on that one. Fair. Uh, now we're going to move up to the main card. We're going to move right. up to the main card. And I'm going to try my best. Cause I don't, you know what? We're going to go just bottom to top. How's that work? I, Bo- it sounds bottom, good. Bottom of the top. Uh, we have, out of nowhere, a Raw Tag Team title match between the Revival and the Edgeheads. Where did this come from? It, it, Wait, uh, what? Yeah. Yeah. That, they that, added that, another match? Yeah, the Raw Tag Team oh title. Oh, my God. Was <laughs> Kurt, Kurt well, where did this come from? I don't know. I sincerely, I think it was a backstage segment. That they happened no off build, screen. Like, they, they talked about this weeks, months ago at this point, like, you know, reuniting Hawkins and Ryder, and they disappeared yeah. from Raw. And that was it. I mean, they did have there a match. There was no they build did have for a this. Match. But, but it was nothing to it. It was just a They match did lose. It. They did lose. I don't know how, like, they lost the tag team match, what and they get a Raw tag title. This? I don't know. 
And I already feel disrespected on oh, behalf God. of the revival for this one. So you Katie, know what? What do you have? Let's just move. Let's just move to it. Revival <laughs> oh, versus boy. the Edgeheads. I'm saying the Edgeheads are going to win. We're finally going to get uh, Hawkins' uh, losing streak to end. It has to be this match, though. Oh, I mean, it God. has to be. Why give them WrestleMania unless it's to, yeah, like, you know. Yeah, this makes no sense. This so makes no go... sense. If they were always billed for a few weeks, it would have been exciting. Yeah. But they did nothing to, like, I wanted this to happen, but they didn't give us anything to make us want it to happen. It's like, oh, by the way, this thing that you want? Yeah, I got it. I mean, it's covered in shit, and, you know, I found it on the side of the road, but it is the thing that you wanted, so it's the same, right? Same? Yeah, I, same? I, the only thing I have a problem with, I hated it, that, it, that it's against the revival. They have been so that damn is my disrespected. Problem with this oh match. God, yeah. That is my problem. But I am going to agree and say Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder get it. The only thing that I would say, the only reason I think that that Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder lose this is if Zack Ryder just like goes full on heel. But there's been no build, so saying, nobody like would care. They would get no match. reaction no. out of like Zack Ryder finally saying, "You know what? I'm done being saddled to you and beating the crap out of Kurt Hawkins." Just everybody, would, they, it, the crowd would be dead silent. The crowd, however, would go fucking nuts uh, if Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins gets to win, especially if Kurt Hawkins ends up getting the pin. That's true. So I go with the revived Edgeheads. Huh? The revived Edgeheads. <laughs> we're gonna move well, on from that match there's on. nothing to it now we have a a much more amazing match uh this one has had some story build to it at least a little bit <clears throat> we have the smackdown tag team championship match uh between the champions the usos uh oh yeah they're, they're also on here too ricochet and alistair black uh, yeah <laughs> jesus christ they're gonna be yeah, putting, putting in some work. work uh the bar is our own seamus and shinsuke nakamura and rusev i'm honestly surprised that they haven't been given a name yet but then again yeah. they've been off tv so frequently that nobody gives a damn about this team up yeah so the story behind this one is actually much more nuanced than the story behind the raw uh tag team titles and that is when uh during the start of co oh, well the, the the crux of Kofi Mania, I should say. Uh, uh, the New Day, Xavier Woods and Big E had to go win a gauntlet match. And if they won the gauntlet match, Kofi would be added to the uh, the WrestleMania title picture uh, for the WWE title. Now, they go against uh, the Good Brothers. They go against the Bar. They go mm-hmm. against Rusev and Nakamura. And then they go up against the Usos. The Usos, probably the only, like, not faces because they really aren't faces. They're, saying, they're, yeah, no, they're, they're kind of dicks. Yeah, they're, they're, no, they're, 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 not too, kind of. they're they're too much of a dick. They're not kind of. They are. They are dicks. They 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 are kind of dicks to the point <laughs> where they you can't call them faces. But like they still like the, they continue the fact that that out of all of the SmackDown tag teams, the New Day are is the only one that they have any respect for. Yeah. If y'all remember, like I want to say a year back. Uh, the Usos ran down all the tag teams after winning. I think it was the Hell in a Cell match, that that massive Hell in a Cell match from, from a year or two ago. Uh, they ran down the whole of the tag team division, but when they got to the New Day, they're like, you know what? We respect y'all. And like that's that sort of mutual respect and, like, you it, know, rivalry. It got them in a little bit of yeah, trouble. So it got so them in trouble. So uh, Steffi McMahon is like, since y'all want to forfeit, y'all got to go up against everybody for your SmackDown tag team titles. And here we are. Good story. With only like a week's worth, that they can do it. They can get it done. They just don't. So anyway, KD, who you got? Uh this one's tough because I mean you can't ever go against the Usos, Mm-mm. but at the same time, you know, Black and Ricochet are going to have some mighty empty wastes after Friday, <laughs> and I think some SmackDown gold would look nice on them. So I'm going to say uh, Ricochet and Black win. Wait, wait. Who'd you have for the NXT? Oh, yeah. You did say you did say War Raiders. Yeah, you were he smart. Said, he you were very smart. Raiders, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I was trying I, to get you. I was trying to get you. On the other hand, I'm not gonna say that I wasn't smart. It was just on behalf of my aunt. Yeah, you said Ricochet. And, uh, I have to say Ricochet Black. and Alistair again. Wait. So they're gonna be double champions in your opinion? Whatever. In your eyes, they're gonna be raising both gold. Whatever. I mean, it's not like it hasn't it's happened not before. Gonna matter. I, hey, I I'm give sure it. I give it work. to you. I give it to you because like like uh, it, it's. I mean, it hasn't happened, but it has been attempted with Kevin Owens. So yeah, um, I had War Raiders last last mm-hmm. time. 
your aunt is not going to be very happy if you do not pick Ricochet. You know what? I'm actually going to have to pick Ricochet (laughs) and Black because, like, you don't have them. You don't have them lose against the War Raiders, and then lose in this fatal four way match. Yeah, and just have them float around as just a tag team. No, I don't, I don't you, think you, that makes you, any you, sense. These, these, these guys aren't that, that kind of talent. If they were already just a tag team, okay, yeah. I get it. But since this is a new tag team, you're bringing them up for a reason. You might as well have them win gold. I say Aleister Black and Rick Shake is this. I think this is going to be like probably, if not the best, then second best match on the card. Okay. I, th- I think I think this is going to be so freaking nuts because the Usos are too solid. Ricochet and Black are too solid. The bar, whether or not they have any direction, are freaking solid. Yeah. And Shisuke Nakamura, when he gives a shit, is good. So is Rusev. So I just... I, yeah. Yeah. All right. So yeah. we're going to move on. Uh, I don't know what the order is. So we're just going to say that somewhere in the middle of the card, we're going to get Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston. Kofi Mania, holy crap. Can you give just like a really quick recap? Okay, quick recap. Mustafa Ali, now known just as Ali. Thank you, WWE, for chopping off first names because why? Uh, Mustafa Ali gets injured leading into the gauntlet match, heading into el- Elimination Chamber. Kofi Kingston takes the spot but puts in such a an amazing showing, actually beating some people because when people thought he was going in, they thought, okay, since it's going to be Kofi versus Daniel Bryan as the first part of the gauntlet match, Kofi's just going to get the pin. This is going to be easy. It's 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 not going to hurt him, but it's just expected. Mm-hmm. It's expected that the champion is going to keep going. That is not what happened. Kofi Kingston gets the win. Everybody's behind Kofi. He gets more momentum throughout the gauntlet match. Finally loses to AJ Styles. AJ Styles gets beat by Randy Orton. Blah, 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 blah. Nobody gives a shit. Then we go into the elimination chamber. He's got so much traction behind him that everybody is behind Kofi Kingston throughout all this because it feels like it actually is a thing that can happen. After 11 years, after that 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 storyline with Randy Orton where Randy finally buries his ass, which everybody hates Randy about, the putts, his his main event push is is has been gone since then. He hasn't had one since that time he trashed Randy Orton's car. And now we get a chance to see it right here, and it feels like it's within our reach. And just like it's within our reach, it gets snatched away from us. Daniel Bryan gets a win. People are still high on Kofi Kingston. Mm-hmm. That high never fades. Now we have Daniel Bryan playing the role of the authority, the same role the authority had against him during re- the run up to WrestleMania 30. And just like him, Daniel Bryan, uh, just like then, Daniel Bryan was never the the choice for WrestleMania 30. With CM Punk basically gone, uh, leaving the company, they decided to give him the push on on Punk's way out. Now we get the same thing, except Daniel Bryan is staying here. Kofi Kingston's getting that push, and it's going to be Daniel Bryan that he faces up against. So, like, there's so many amazing parallels. There's so many callbacks that makes this story great. And WWE, for the first time in a while, decided not to get in their own damn way and just let it happen, not to overly make it complicated. So, Kofi Kingston versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship. KD, who do you have? Kofi, plain and simple. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to ask. Damn. I, that's, oh, Kofi. Kofi. They, if they can't not do Kofi. Yeah. But I'm just going to say it, make it plain and simple. They can't not do Kofi. It sucks that it's at Daniel Bryan's expense I know, because he is because perfect Daniel as a heel. He is so amazing right he now. He is so damn good as oh. a heel. But it's got to be Kofi. It can't not be Kofi. You cannot you cannot walk into the next city, uh, into, into Raw or SmackDown with Kofi losing to Daniel Bryan. They will tear that house down. Yeah. So it's got to be Kofi King. So we're going to move ahead to our... Oh wait, wait! I had to double check. I had to double check. Make sure, make sure. Yeah, my last uh, we have the we got Roman. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We got the fatal four for the women's tag time. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Storyline: right, right. basically, Bailey and Sasha won the first ever women's tag team championships at Elimination yeah. Chamber. Yeah, Elimination Chamber. Everybody wants a piece. There you go. Well, I mean, we we do have to talk about how. Um, Beth Phoenix came oh, yes, back. My yes, girl, yes. the Amazon, oh, God, the Amazon. Yes. Yeah, we uh, do have to give props to a veteran, Beth Phoenix. Yes. Oh absolutely. my God, she looks so she good. She looks good. She hasn't lost anything. Nothing. How? She had Nothing. a child and has been retired for years and she hasn't lost anything. 
nothing. Oh my god! And she looked like she had not lost a beat in the ring. Not a freaking beat in the ring. She looked good in the ring. She looked good physically. You know what? The, uh, that's the only thing that's happening here. We have the yeah, Boston Hug connection versus Beth Phoenix and Natalia versus the Iconics. No, it's the Iconics. <laughs> I am not going to have y'all you gotta correcting say it right. if me. You're going to commit this is to this is my it, house. You have to say it this right. is my spot. I'm the host. No, you no can't. more correcting me. No, you can't. no. You say it correctly. God bless it. Katie, will you tell him? It's iconic, and then you pose. You yes, you're gonna commit. You say it correctly. Katie, who you got? Oh jeez, this is a tough one because I really have enjoyed seeing Beth Phoenix come back. But I'm gonna say Bailey and Sasha. Hold on, Daria. I'm stuck between Beth and the iconic. But I think I'm going to go with the iconic. <laughs> okay. There you go. I'm just going to run through this. All right. Uh, ooh. Yeah, this is tough. This actually is tough because I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't know if all four horsewomen managed to hold up the titles at the end of this. Mm. I mean, there's no way they can. Considering yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, unless they decide to say, you know what? Last second, we're changing the match. It's not like they haven't done that before. And it is Thursday, so we'll see. Yeah, it is Thursday. We still have like two whole freaking days yeah. for them to be like, you know what? Let's flip it. Uh, but you know what? Frick it. I'm going with the Iconics. How do you say it? We're moving on. We got Roman Reigns <laughs> versus Drew McIntyre. Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre basically freaking retired. Uh, 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 shoot, what's his name? Dean Ambrose. Uh, Jesus yeah. Christ. I'm sorry. I need to put some respect on your name. Yeah. I apologize. Dean. Dean, on his way out of the company, once his contract runs out, gets brutalized like two weeks in a row. Like, yeah. yeah. Almost two weeks in a row yeah. uh, by, by Drew McIntyre, well, who decides to just now, beat the crap out of him. Like, those are some good matches, and it made Drew look brutal as hell. Yeah. Then we have Roman Reigns coming back. <sighs> coming back from leukemia. Coming back looking just as good as he was before. And now the crowd is behind him because like we understand that there is a there is a massive demarcation between the character Roman Reigns and the guy Roman Reigns. The guy Joe. So like everybody's like behind Roman Reigns for the like the first time in his career. And this is gonna be a big match because Drew is on to some amazing things mm -hmm. uh in this run of his career and roman reigns is about re ready to get uh, so many r's mm -hmm. ready to get right back into the run see a little, little mini alliteration yay uh that he was on before he had to uh hang it up for a few months um just a regular match who you got kd roman reigns versus drew mcintyre i mean yes roman is back but is he at his full capability? That's a good I question. don't think that's the case. And I think uh, Drew McIntyre is going to kick him in the face and prove that point. Okay. Dark? Uh, I'm going to give Roman Reigns the benefit of the doubt. Oh, really? Yeah. So you're going to go with Roman Reigns? I'll go with Roman Reigns. You're going with Roman Reigns? You got Drew McIntyre? I'm going to be the split. I think that is the best story that they can go for right here between Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns. I think a Roman Reigns win either ends the story right there or makes the story not feel as compelling in the long run. Mm -hmm. But Roman Reigns losing has that cloud of doubt over him. And you want to keep cashing in on Roman Reigns as the sympathetic character. Yeah. And I don't see how you do that with him just winning against Drew McIntyre. Yeah. I think he needs the loss. Uh, they, like the, the same way that some people need or don't need wins, some people need a loss. And I think Roman Reigns eating a pin from Drew McIntyre after catching a Claymore gets Drew McIntyre continuing continuously needling Roman Reigns, being the 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 wall that he has to get through before he can go. Okay, I'm ready to be back at the top of the heap. I'm ready. This I'm ready to say that this is my yard. So, and I think Drew McIntyre is the perfect character for that to happen. So you know what I got Drew McIntyre on that one. Okay. Moving on. Jesus Christ. Moving on. Bobby Lashley versus Finn Balor for the Intercontinental title. Bobby Lashley has been has been inconsistently good. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Like he's either been between forgettable or so great that I just love seeing him on my screen. And he has the Intercontinental title. I'm guessing Leo Rush is not going to be at ringside. Please don't be at ringside. Only because I need this to be just a straight up one-on-one match. We have Finn Balor. Yeah, it has, that. yeah, yeah. Good luck on that. Uh, we've had Finn Balor, who it's been a year and a half, almost two years, since Finn has unleashed the demon, and he did that primarily because uh, Bray Wyatt got sick and he had to face up against AJ Styles. All oh, right. Uh, at uh, Survivor Series, yeah. See, I, I remember some of this stuff. I remember, yeah. I remember a little bit, a little bit of it. Uh, which was a better match than what they would have got with Bray Wyatt to begin with. But we're going to move on from that. Finn Balor is going to unleash the demon in an Intercontinental title match. Now, the only thing that is really super interesting about this is outside of, like, maybe a six-man tag match out of nowhere or a, a, a random-ass tag match, Finn Balor hasn't really pinned Bobby Lashley. When he took the title away from from Bobby and when he got the chance to get the number one contendership for the Intercontinental title uh, a couple of weeks ago or a week or two ago um, on Raw, he pinned Leo Rush and he pinned Jinder Mahal. But one-on-one, I don't think Finn Balor has pinned Bobby Lashley. Wow. And that makes this incredible because this is not Bobby Lashley with some weird stipulation where he doesn't need to be pinned. Finn Balor has to pin or make Bobby Lashley tap to win the title. And he's bringing out the demon. Now, the demon has been undefeated, I think. Because I think he won that match against AJ Styles. I think. I can't remember. Don't quote me on that. Look it up on the database. We'll figure it out if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, kudos. You get a beer. Okay. (laughs) But I think Finn Balor is undefeated as a demon. I think. I think he is. So he's going up against Bobby Lashley, who he's never pinned. And Bobby Lashley going up against the Demon, who I don't believe has ever lost a match. KD, who you got for the Intercontinental title? I mean, Bobby Lashley has been on a tear, but at the same time, you can't stop Demon Finn. I'm going to say Finn takes this. Okay. Are you? Finn Balor. Just, just straight up. Just, 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 just shut the... Hey, I'm, I'm, like I'm, you I'm, said, Bobby Lashley is a hit or miss. So I can't really bank on that. I'll just go with Finn Balor. I'm so angry at the title picture on Raw. Yeah. Primarily because since Brock Lesnar isn't around, Mm -hmm. the only title that they really have to contend for is the Intercontinental title. And that's frustrating as hell. It's frustrating as hell because I believe Finn Balor deserves the Universal title around his waist. The only reason why I would ever pick Finn Balor to lose this match is if I felt 100% certain that that title was getting pulled off of Brock Lesnar and we were going to see a new crop of challengers to make that title fresh. Uh, And I think Finn Balor would have been perfect for that. But since I don't have that 100% guarantee that Brock Lesnar is going to walk out of WrestleMania without his universal title... I say Finn Balor gets the win because he deserves to have gold around that glorious, glorious waist of his. We're going to move on to our next title match, which, again, just sort of happened because I really, I really didn't want this match to happen. You know what match I wanted to happen? What? Ray versus Andrade. That would have been yeah, an amazing. I, I, and I thought they were building us up for that. I Same really here. did. Because at one point we had a storyline and then... Where the hell did Samoa Joe come from? And now all of a sudden it's Rey Mysterio and Samoa Joe. Well, like Samo- the only reason why Samoa Joe even got included uh, with with the pro- uh, the projected uh, Mysterio Andrade storyline is because one it ramped up due to the fact that our truth wanted to emulate John Cena and do an open challenge, and whenever one of them came out, the other one came out and made a triple threat match, okay. and it was it was good. Okay. Then Samoa Joe got included in a fatal four way match, won the title, mm-hmm. and he's been just like beating the crap out of Rey Mysterio ever since. Andrade has been like kind of nowhere since then. So that's that's how we that's how we get to this point. This is still going to be a good match because it's Rey Mysterio and it's also Samoa Joe. They right. are they have some amazing chemistry that I was not expecting uh, between these two. Because uh, aside from WWE, I don't think they've ever faced off against each other. I don't know. Don't quote me on this. Find it in the database. If I'm wrong, you get yourself some cocaine. KD. What? 
Jets. Yes. Who you got? United States title versus uh, Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio. <laughs> oh, jeez. This is this is one where I mean, it's Samoa Joe. Yeah, it's Samoa Joe. Wait, that, that was your pick? Yeah. I was yeah. expecting you to... I was expecting no, you to get like, it. I mean, seriously, Ray is completely outclassed here. <laughs> it's just the way that you said it. It felt like you were about uh. to, like, you know, the way that everything is, it's Samoa Joe. And I was like, like, yeah, it is Samoa Joe. And Samoa Joe was really good. I was expecting, like, some more thought to be thrown out. I was like, nah, just, just fuck it. It's Samoa Joe. It's Samoa Joe. Yeah. Darry, who you got? Ray Mysterio is going to pull everything out the bag that he has, but I still think it's going to be Samoa. This is Samoa Joe's first title on the main roster. Yeah. First of all, that is a travesty, but that's mainly been because of injury because he's just coming back from, like, I think his second injury. Yeah. Um, Samoa Joe with the title brings it a level of prestige the same way that Miz with the Intercontinental title brought it that same prestige because uh, Samoa, uh, that United States title has been, like, the forgotten redheaded stepchild of titles. Yeah. In, in the WWE. And here, I'm like, okay, when Samoa Joe, when you hear that, that, bram, 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 you know the title's coming out. Yeah. And you know that Joe is going to give a damn about having gold around his waist. Yeah, he cares. And uh, because of he that, cares. because of that, I think uh, Samoa Joe ends up getting the win for this. We're going to move on to a singles match, a match that just came, again, came from out of nowhere. Like, a lot yeah. of these matches just got a build up within the last I three weeks. we need to give a backstory. Just... There, there really is none because it's it's basically AJ Styles versus not legend killer Randy Orton, indie killer Randy Orton. Okay. Like, he's, he's been crapping all over the indies and saying this is not the, the house that AJ Styles built. This is the house that Randy Orton built. But uh-huh. here's the thing, Randy. Nobody gives a shit about you. Leave. Yeah. I mean, don't leave, but leave. I mean, that's a little hard. She doesn't need to leave. That's what I'm saying. Don't leave, but leave. Give a shit about your job, dude. Have a I mean, like, this one, it looks like he does give a damn about this particular one, so I'm, I'm happy about that. So, we're going to move on. KD. Yes. Who you got? AJ Styles versus Rundy. Uh, this is going to be an entertaining match no matter what. Randy is motivated, which is like, you know, that's when he does his best work usually. And AJ is AJ. I mean, he can draw a good match out of basically anybody. I mean, he could fall out of the out of the bed and still pull off a three star match. Yeah, he can. <laughs> Honestly, this is one of the harder choices on the entire show because both are more than capable of winning at a moment's instance, really. True. It's just a matter of who wants it more who's like you know ready to keep going and prove that they're the best and i think in this case um we're looking at an aj styles that has a fire in him that like you know maybe he's been getting soft for a while and he's got something saying it's time to get back up to the top again he's been gone for a while and it's time to start climbing once more so i think aj takes it okay I, I'm going to agree because I, I absolutely have to agree with the promo that we got on Tuesday. Yeah. Very, very nice promo. By the way, I, I have fallen in love with Kevin Owens show because like the last two, the last two times he had guests on there, he is the only smart one to know when to freaking leave and just let oh, yeah, shit he happen. Books it. So I, I, I love that. I love that about it. So uh, yeah. Who do you have? D? Wait, who did you have? I have AJ. Okay. Um, I got AJ Styles primarily because I want to see AJ Styles versus Kofi Kingston for the WWE title somewhere down the line. Oh, God. And, and that I would think, be sexy as hell. And I think, uh, I think, yeah, I, I think, I think that, I think uh, AJ needs the momentum for that to happen. Okay. Uh, oh, you know what? What? Scratch that. I'm, I'm, no, no, no. What are you doing? No. Would you just hurry up? I'm, I'm going to hurry. I'm going to hurry, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to take back my pick. I'm going to yank it back like T.I. did in ATL. You know what? No. Randy Orton gets a win because I think Randy Orton's going to be Kofi Kingston's first challenger. And that. Oh. 
that. We're going back oh, full circle. that is what I think I needs gotcha. to happen. So I got Randy Orton for this match. Okay. I think it's going to be it's going to be an RKO out of nowhere. AJ Styles is going to float around for a little bit, wondering if he's ever going to get back to this top. And as he does, Randy Orton's going to have renewed energy going for the WWE title. That's what's going to happen. So my pick is Randy Orton. We're going to move on. Okay. We're going to move on before I have to double check, double back around. So we have a false count anywhere match between Shane McMahon and The Miz. I think everybody and their mama was expecting The Miz to be the one to turn on Shane McMahon. We were. Not mm-hmm. I believe Shane. that. To, I believe that to be the, uh, yes, the case. Yes, it was not supposed to be Shane. It was supposed to be The Miz. Shane turns what on The Miz. What happened? Uh, because I, I think like they don't want to have any face McMahon family members. Gotcha. I think that's what it Makes is. Sense. Like You can't have anybody who deviates from the family. Yeah. Why Why would you? Otherwise, they would fight against the family. And that would have been a cluster F all over again. So it, Yeah, yeah, so that's true. That's we true. have Shane McMahon who turned on The Miz, beat up Miz's potato-faced father. That's what he said. His words, not mine. Um, and The Miz, who out of nowhere looks like an incredibly entertaining face in all of this, which I was not expecting. Mm. I mean, he was already entertaining as a face, but we thought we were waiting for the shoe to drop. It's still happening. It's still entertaining. I still want to see this. I still want to see this play out. Uh, so we have a false count anywhere match. Shane McMahon versus The Miz. Who you got, KD? Hmm. I mean, I do love a good old-fashioned false count anywhere match, and especially at a giant arena like MetLife Stadium. I really hope they make it all around. You hope and, it actually is anywhere and not just like. And I kind of question: the Does arena. the match even end at WrestleMania? I don't think it will. Has I mean, because like you know, I mean, who is to say? Like you know, they get both end up in the back of a truck and just start going and don't show up again until Tuesday. Oh my god. That actually yeah. would be kind of amazing. Like if it they if they showed up on Tuesday completely bedraggled wearing the same exact gear and just like nobody wants to give up yet. Yep. <laughs> that that would that, that would be would awesome. Be, I'd that give would it be that. Hilarious. I'd give it that. And you that know would what? Be good I mean that telling. said I think uh I think Miz takes this. <laughs> All right. Miz takes this. Dario, who you got? The Miz. The Miz and Mrs. I got Shane. I, I got Shane. I, I think for this. I know why you have Shane, and that's fair to say. Oh, oh, oh. Tell, enlighten me. Why do I have Shane? No, because you want to be <laughs> the asshole. No, it's. Has to go against. It really isn't. It, well, what it, is it really it? isn't. It really isn't. It what really is isn't. It? Uh, if they're really throwing their whole weight behind face Miz. This needs to be a lengthy story arc. It needs to be. It needs to last for a while. And this is one of those matches that completely ends a feud if the face wins. If the heel wins, the face has something to go for. And Shane McMahon on TV continuing to throw up barriers for for The Miz uh, in his career. That's perfect. That's perfectly fine. Especially if he has his own proto- uh, uh, ministry behind him, like I get, uh, I get one of the uh, the colognes, I get Shelton Benjamin, I don't get Sanity being on the payroll. That makes absolutely no yeah, damn I, sense. I didn't know what that was about. But whatever, like uh, the Ascension, you know, they're right there. They are right freaking there. Yeah. They are perfect for corporate lackeys. Yeah. They are absolutely perfect mm-hmm. for. It, but you choose the team. With sanity as the name to be the corporate like sanity. Sanity. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. Mm-hmm. But I got Shane on this one. I say let Sanity go to Raw, get Ascension over there to SmackDown, let them play the corporate lackeys. Fix you don't even need to fix anything for that. No, you can literally no. just say Shane. Uh, uh, saw Sanity lose to the Miz yeah. and feels like they're not worth it, so he trades them for the Ascension. Boom! Take it, free idea. Let the Ascension do something and move. Actually, on. do something. Yeah, moving on. We're gonna move on. We've got a match that most likely will not happen, but if it does happen, I want to drop kick my TV. We have Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin. Why Baron Corbin? Because the WWE hates us. That's why. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and go for the picks. We're just going to go for the picks for a match that may not and better not happen. KD, okay, who you got? Okay, calm down, calm down. 
I'd go. See you smiling. This is me uh, smiling. Okay, dude. Who do you have? I hate this. I hate <laughs> that this is Kurt Angle's final match. And it's like, I hope it doesn't turn out to be his closure. And I hope, you know, someone who we possibly can't see decides to show up and, like, you know, give him the proper clo- like and final match. But that said, uh, you go out on your back, Baron Corbin. Really? I can I, see I, that. I hate it so much. Oh my god, this is the Baron, worst! Baron Corbin is a two-headed penis. <gasps> Wait, pause. Where's the insult in that? <laughs> I'm just going to go for Baron Corbin. He's a two-headed <laughs> penis. What is your pick? This match better not happen. I'm going to say fuck it and Kurt Angle because, like, you don't go on your back to Baron Corbin. Well, it'd be different if it was Chad. If it, it'd be different if it was Chad Gable. If it was <laughs> Chad Gable, I'd be like, yeah, Kurt Angle gets a loss. If it was Shelton Benjamin, yeah, Kurt Angle gets a loss. Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin? They're going to do it. Kurt Angle gets the win. We're moving the frick on. We got Triple H and Batista in a no-holds-barred match. If Triple H loses, he has to retire. Now, this is a story going back almost two decades. At least, like, 17 years. It goes back at least, like, 16, 17 years. So, Batista versus Triple H, one-on-one. Batista has never eaten a pin against Triple H. Triple H has never defeated Batista. Mm, this is that's 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 here. the big thing. And if he doesn't defeat Batista again, he has to retire from in ring competition. Mm. Now Triple H is pushing eighty five years old, so <laughs> his time will come to an end at some particular point in time. Will it be on Sunday? KD, who do you have? I mean, you bring up that fact. Triple H has never beaten Batista, and we see how that is, you know, kind of history with Triple H and his marquee matches at WrestleMania. So I'm thinking this is the one time Triple H manages to eke out a victory. All right. Uh, Triple H, I'm going to agree. Okay. Triple H, Triple H. Yeah. My reasoning, I, I'm actually very on the fence with this. This may not be the best match on the card, but it probably will be the most compelling, the one that we pop the most for for, for things, aside That's from fair. Kofi Kingston and Daniel Bryan. Like, this is the one that everybody really seems to give a damn about. Um, On the one hand, having Triple H be retired is a big thing, mm-hmm. a very big thing. Uh, but on the other hand, Batista is not going to wrestle beyond this point. So why would he need the win? That's true. So who is your pick? My pick is Triple H. Um, I think he's going to finally beat Batista. I don't think... Again, Batista, they, him winning gives him absolutely nothing. It does nothing for the product. It does nothing for WWE. It does nothing for and losing wrestling. Does nothing. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, like, you know, since we have this match, it is Batista's final match. It will be great. It'll be a yeah. feather in Triple H's cap. We get to watch Batista ride off into the sunset, uh, even if he's riding off on his back. Like it'll still be a good look. I got so, you, you know, I, I give it. I give it to Triple H for this one. Okay. Um, we're gonna move on to the match that I swear to Christ better have the ink outcome that I need because I don't know how much more of this I can take. Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins. You know what the story to this is? Brock Lesnar is a dick. That's the last one. Ah. Uh- because they're, they're, the, they're the main event. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. See, see, see look at you. I, 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 I just want to make sure we're giving Oh, you know I'm going to give it to him. You know I am. Okay. You know me. Yeah. I got this. Really need a I got this. With there is no storyline. Brock Lesnar is a fucking dick. He has a title. He needs to lose it. Or I will lose my shit. KD, who do you have? Seth. D. Seth. Seth. Moving on. Your turn, D. <laughs> okay. The main event, this is the first ever, 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 ever women's main event. I am so stoked. At WrestleMania. At WrestleMania. I was getting there. Could you sew up the dick hole? Thank you. Why? 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 What's with the dick hole? Ronda Rousey, 
Charlotte Flair, and Becky Lynch. Pretty good, compelling storyline with this. Okay, give it to us. Basically, they've been beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> I mean, I'm, that's literally the storyline. All right, all right. I, I will fill in some gaps. I will fill in some gaps because what right now, because right the main important stuff. Because is... Because if they missed, if they missed a couple of weeks, they would have missed the fact that Charlotte Flair beat Oscar for the SmackDown Women's oh, Championship, I was and that is also not to say that. And that is also on the line. So it's not just for the Raw Women's Championship. This is winner take all. They take both titles, right. which I hate. I absolutely freaking hate. That's why I didn't want to discuss that. But go for it. I mean, we it. have to. We have to. And yes, they did beat each other up a couple of Raws ago. Not Charlotte a couple Fla- of Raws ago, all the way leading up to here. Okay, yeah, they did beat each other up. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Like, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Uh, there really isn't any more to say. So, KD, final match on Zakar. Who you got? Becky. Right. Becky. Damn. Becky. I, Cause Ronda doesn't need it. Charlotte doesn't need it. Uh, yeah, you know what? And what, it does since, nothing since... for them if they lose or if they win. They still are awesome. They don't need it. So, so my big thing is I have a couple. I have a couple of problems and 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 things with this. Uh, number one, my problem is if they do unify the titles. That is like the worst thing that they could possibly do. They have way too many women competitors on this. Unless everybody else is going to transition to tag teams, there's no reason to have the one women's title and have them work double duty while the men get to, you know, just go for one branded title. Okay. I don't think that's I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's just like good storytelling. I don't care. I don't care for that to happen. Two, I think it would be absolutely horrendous to watch Becky Lynn's drop either title at any point in time. So whoever wins this most likely is going to be Becky. Whoever wins this is going to work double duty and hold both titles <laughs> for, I would hope at least a couple of pay-per-views, a couple of months, a few months, in fact. So like, we're going to see a lot of Becky on TV. That's not, that's not the bad part. The bad part is it's going to make the rest of the women's division kind of stagnate. At that time, it, it, I just, I, I think this was a bad idea to take the title off Oscar. I really do. I think, it, I think it was a very bad idea to take the title yeah. off Oscar. I think it's an even worse idea to put both titles up and not pull, uh, uh, a, like the undisputed title kind of issue that, that Chris Jericho had when he went up against, uh, Kurt Angle and who was it? It wasn't Chris Benoit, was it? I think it was The Rock. It was Kurt Angle and The Rock. For the yeah, it was, it was, it was. Unless they pull some shit like that, which they're not going to, and they haven't, unless they decide to change it. I don't think this is a. I don't think this is a, just. They had a match that they didn't need to meddle in. They could have just let it cook on its own, but they kept wanting to throw in seasonings, and now you got paprika where you should have nutmeg. <laughs> Are you done? I'm done. Like, like, WWE fucked up a wet dream with this match. Yeah, they kind of did. They fucked up a wet dream. They could have just let it simmer. The same way that they let Kofi... The only reason why Kofi and, 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 and Daniel Bryan work so well right now and, and, and is handling itself because it took, like, five weeks to get there. This has been going on since Royal Rumble. And instead of and just January, sitting on... Yeah. yeah. Instead of just sitting on their damn hands oh, and just no, letting it Summer work. Oh, Slam of last year. You you know what? You're, it's been going on for at least the past... Almost eight, a year. Six, seven, eight months. Yeah, almost It's been a going year. on like that. And instead of just sitting on their hands and just letting it cook, letting the women do the heavy lifting, they're like, let me meddle in this. Let me continue meddling in this. And now we have this match that people want, but the outcome that nobody wants. Nobody wants whatever prospect, uh, proposed outcome that they're going to have for this match. It screwed everybody over. We're going to love this match. It's probably going to be the match on the card, but I don't give a shit. At the same time, I want to watch it, but I don't give a shit. Yes. That being said, can I talk us out? We done? We done? We good? Yes. We good? Would you like me to talk us out? Or you can... No, I got it. I got okay, this right go here. For it. This right here. As always, you can catch our podcast on iTunes. Link in the description below. 
or at the website hillkaiju.com. There you can find our show articles and merchandise to help keep the site up and running and to keep us providing you with content. You can also join the Kaiju Wrecking Crew by following us on our Twitter account at Hillkaiju, where we'll provide any updates, developments, and insights. Thanks again for listening to us. Thank you again, KD, for yep, coming. And before we yep. end, we have April birthday shout outs. April birthday shout outs. Who you got? We got Gabby Dandridge. Gabby. Burton Phillips. Burton. Derek Christian. Don't lie. <laughs> you, you, you know I can edit this. I can just bleep that out. You're not going to. I'm going to bleep Derek that Christian, out. Derek Christian, Derek Christian, Derek Christian. His birthday's coming up. Stop August cussing. Selke. Stop bleeping <laughs> so much. <laughs> if you would like a shout out, from the Kaiju Beast, please click, like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know when you were born on what glorious month you were born. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, there you yeah. go. There you go. Alrighty. Bye. Wait, wait. We're not done. What? Why? I, 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 I got to I'm, I'm not done with our catchphrase. Oh go, You're sitting go, here just jumping go. in. You jumped in and everything. And remember, key smashing. That's the, that's the game. What? Ha, ha, ha.